What's up, everybody? Welcome to Claiming Christianity. My name is Steve. Today, I want to talk a little bit about study Bibles. We have lots of Bible reviews here on this channel. As a matter of fact, that's kind of how this channel got started. Uh, it wasn't the intention, but that's where God kind of directed me. Uh, and I ended up doing a whole lot of Bible reviews. I've done a lot of study Bible reviews, and I love a good study Bible. However, we're going to get into today uh, the ins and the outs of a study Bible and uh, maybe how not to use it, uh, if you will. And I have a feeling I'm going to contradict myself a lot during this video, and that's not the intention. So I hope you can follow along with kind of the heart of the message here. For those of you who are new, again, my name is Steve. Welcome to Claiming Christianity. While you're here, you're going to be encouraged and equipped to be the Christian you claim to be. We're going to do that by going through scripture and reviewing solid tools and resources to help make your day-to-day -day better and more Christ-focused. If that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. So listen, I, I've had this, uh, like I mentioned you know, in, in the intro here, I, I do a lot of Bible reviews. I like to show you guys and, and put put stuff out there that you can't exactly just walk into the store and get anymore. It's at least in my area, it's not a real thing. You can't just walk into a Christian bookstore and go to the two aisles of Bibles and look through them. So I've been blessed uh, to to get a, a lot of handful of these Bibles and be able to open them up and do reviews. And I love and I love them. And I've and I've long since done lots of study Bible reviews. You can see them. Oh, other shoulder. You can see them here. There's one shelf. I have two more shelves of study Bibles that you can't see behind my back. And some of them are fantastic. Some of them are not as great, um, depending on what you're looking for. But what I want to talk about in this video is, is uh, maybe how I use them or how I think they should be used. Because I've kind of started to have a funny feeling when I talk to people about their favorite study Bibles or when they use uh, the study Bible in a way that maybe is less than completely appropriate. And what I mean by that is this. I just did a review uh, of, of a Bible a week or two ago that come out, one of the last reviews that I did, and I really didn't like uh, a couple of the commenters, uh, not commenters on the video, the contributors to the actual study material within the Bible. I don't mean I did not like them personally. I don't know them personally, but I do know their theological viewpoint um, and it's flawed. <laughs> and in some cases it's downright wrong. Okay. So as I'm doing these reviews, I find myself in like, I can't, I don't know that I can exactly 100% recommend this Bible, but I also, but they're um, are people that are contributing that are solid theologians and the stuff that they're saying is very accurate. And that brought up this thought. Know who you're, you're, who is writing the commentary in your study Bible um, and know from which theological viewpoint they come. That's going to require you to do a little bit of extra work. And hopefully, in, uh, hopefully in channels like this, with the way that I do my Bible reviews, hopefully some of the stuff that I say will help you with that. But the reason that I bring that up and the reason that I, I struggle sometimes uh, with whether or not to recommend a study Bible is because we have uh, we, we have the, the chance or of going into a study Bible uh, of reading the commentary and giving the commentary a little bit too much uh, emphasis or giving the commentary a little bit too much power. And we can tend to forget uh, that that the extra stuff in a study Bible is just being written um, by men, by fallible men. And now again, I don't want to be taken out of context here. I'm not saying they're not well-studied individuals that know a whole lot more than I do. That's why I use commentaries and that's why I use study Bibles. But it's making sure that I'm reading them in light of what the scripture says. So let me offer you this at this point in this video. Here's how I use a study Bible. Here's how I think that they should be used. Um, and that's as, as a resource. That's why I end up getting hardcover study Bibles. I don't carry my study Bible around because when I'm listening to a pastor preach, I'm not 
using the study commentary. I want to hear what he has to say uh, when I'm going back and forth to church. So I have a really nice reference Bible. It's sitting right here. It goes with me a lot of places. Actually, this is a rebind. Um, short, quick little plug for Jeffrey Rice and Post Tenebras Lux. Bible rebinding do a fantastic job. I love this Bible. Um, but it's just a basic, plain old Bible. I say basic, plain old. This, these are the words of God. Don't, don't get me wrong here. Um, but it's just, just a reference Bible. Um, because when I'm listening to somebody preach or teach or speak or I'm doing my own studying, I want to be reading only the words of God, only the 66 books of the canon. And I don't want my eyes. Um, or my brain to start getting distracted by all the other stuff that comes in, in a study Bible. And I fear, and the reason that I fear this is because I am guilty of doing it a lot, uh, especially in the past. You start to read only the comments. When it comes to a study Bible, I'm looking if I have a, a handy one. I'll grab one from behind me in a minute. When it comes to reading through a study Bible, I know in the past that I've tended to start reading the commentary first. Bad. That's not good. Uh, because then we are going to be reading the actual words of Christ. We're going to be reading the actual scripture in light of what some other guy uh, had to say. And that's backwards. Okay. So I want to offer this. I, I'm not, I, again, I, I'm not talking bad about study Bibles here. I have a lot of study Bibles. I use a lot of them regularly, not all of them, but I do use a lot of them regularly and I use them as resources. They stay on the shelf until I'm ready to gain more information about a passage. And before we do that, we should be reading through the passage or the whole book. If it's a New Testament epistle, you can read through those New Testament epistles, the whole thing, read it all in one sitting, usually in between five and 25 minutes, depending on the size. You know, Romans is going to take you 20 minutes. Um, First John is going to take you five, five to 10 minutes. So read through the whole thing, read through it two or three times. Make sure you're praying before you open your Bible. Make sure you're praying during while you're reading, or at least jotting down things to pray for. Um that you can pray for afterwards, questions you might have, jot down a word, or if you're an underliner and you write in your Bibles, highlight a word, underline a word that you need, uh, that you need to understand more, or a concept that you're not super familiar with. Oh, uh, the scripture says this. I don't exactly know why you're reading through the book of Hebrews. I don't know what that means to the Hebrews. I need to find that out. Jot that down. Okay. So you've read through the text a handful of times, um, and maybe over a couple of days, right? And, and you've really sat with this passage, the actual, the actual biblical passages for quite a while. And now you want to gain a little bit more information. Here's where your study Bible comes in. Okay. At that point, grab your study Bible off the shelf. I have a couple that I'll point out. Um, and, and read the commentary. Hey, what does this guy think about this? What, what are these theologians? And I want to offer this other point is understand that different commentators, commentators, different commentators, different theologians are coming from different theological backgrounds. So the study Bibles I use the most would probably be the ESV study Bible right there, that big orange one. The Reformation Study Bible, general editor is R.C. Sproul, and then right next to it, the John MacArthur Study Bible. Okay, if you don't know this channel very well at all, you know that I'm Reformed. Uh, I, I think that that's the most accurate theological viewpoint. I'll have to do a whole other video on what all those words mean. Um, but you need to know that those three study Bibles come from more of a reformed theological viewpoint or a reformed theological background. Now you need to know this, that John MacArthur's study Bible comes from his viewpoint of scripture, which is dispensationalist. If you don't know what these words are, maybe I'll do videos in the future, look them up and do some research. Um, Johnny Mac is more of a dispensationalist than he is truly reformed. These, none of this, what I'm saying is a put down um, or, or an exaltation for that matter. 
the Reformation Study Bible's general editor's R.C. Sproul. Okay, so you need to know the theological background of the study Bible that you're reading. Just like if you opened up, and I'm going to use this example because it's a completely different theological background. I don't even know if this exists. But if you opened up a Catholic study Bible, it would be coming from a Catholic theological viewpoint. So the commentary you read is going to support their views or is at least going to going to lean that way. It means it's going to lean towards their theological viewpoint. And that's one of the reasons why um, I tend to go first to the study Bibles that I just mentioned, those top three. Now, I have a whole shelf, shelves full of other study Bibles and specialty Bibles that I also access because when I'm studying, I want two different viewpoints. Some of you know, and I've already used this as an example, that I'm a student of Roman Catholic theology. Um, I do not believe Roman Catholic theology. Uh, I believe that it is wrong when it comes to the gospel, and that is why I am a student of it. It has helped me learn my own theology much, much better. So when I'm studying what I have to say, I also study what they have to say. Um, and I'm getting things from two completely different perspectives and that helps me learn. It helps me understand a little bit more. And you can do that uh, with multiple different theologians if you know the theologians who you're reading. Now, really, the, the best commentaries that I have, as a matter of fact, uh, all these books here are just straight single book commentaries. I have other videos that you can access, and maybe I'll try to drop a couple of links down in the description that'll tell you the difference because it's important. Uh, but some of my favorite comment commentators and theologians, F.F. Bruce is one of them. He might come from a particular theological viewpoint or standpoint, but he also, uh, in my opinion, does a pretty good job of letting you know what others think. And, and he's very gracious in doing that. Hey, some people think, you know, interpret this passage this way. Some people interpret this passage this way and you get multiple viewpoints. That's the beauty of um, of an actual single book commentary when you're not going to get that in a study Bible. So we've been going on for like 12 minutes here, and I hope that you uh, have a grasp of what I'm trying to say here, which is be careful with your study Bibles. Be careful getting too addicted. Uh, I'm not using that word to, to sound anything other than what I'm saying, but it can be addicting to, uh, to open the Bible and just read the commentary. We want to know what something says, so we open the Bible, we read the commentary, and it, um, and we just believe that. Okay, don't do that because that guy might not be right. I don't know who the guy you're reading is or what study Bible you're reading, but he may not be perfectly accurate. And I know that he's not perfectly accurate because he's a human. None of us are, right? None of us are perfectly accurate. What they are doing is commenting based on their knowledge, which is much greater and bigger than our knowledge, which is why it's helpful. They're just commenting on what this means or what this could mean. Okay. One of my favorite, I'm going to call it a study Bible, but it's not exactly that, um, is, is this Bible, which is totally different. This is the net full notes Bible. What this Bible is, is not a typical study Bible, but this is the actual scholars, the Greek and Hebrew scholars telling you why they interpreted words the way that they did. And that can be extremely helpful when you think about it and when you're studying. But what I want to leave you with here today is a, a hope or um, hopefully a loving encouragement to not have a study Bible as your number one main source. Unless you only have one Bible. If you only have one Bible, great. Get an ESV study Bible uh, and, and that, in my opinion, and in a lot of other people's opinions, is probably pound for pound the best study Bible on the market, if you can only have one, right? But if you have two, make sure one of them is just a reference Bible. And my encouragement today is to be spending the bulk of your time with just the Word of God, not the extra articles and the extra commentary. That way... You're making sure to focus on what you know the truth is, and you're letting the Holy Spirit work in you as you read those words. We're not being uh, slightly clouded or slightly distracted by the commentary, by other people's commentary, because it can draw us in and we can get way too used to just opening the Bible and reading the commentary, right? So don't do that. I hope this has helped. 
Uh, it's been on my heart and on my mind a lot, especially as this channel transitions. So if you've hung in there with me for this long today, uh, here 15 minutes on, and you've noticed my channel is slightly transitioning from just Bible reviews, which I love doing. I'll always continue to do them as long as when I get the Bibles. But the bulk of what I want to put out there is really teaching information and going through the actual Bible and reading these Bibles that we uh, that we have and that we review, making sure we understand them correctly, at least from my viewpoint, and uh, and actually reading, getting in, and, and doing what the mission here is, which is to encourage and equip Christians to be who they claim to be. Often, just having the Bible isn't good enough. We need to be reading it. We need to be spending time in it. And as I've done some of these Bible reviews, the, the further I've gotten into kind of this ministry, the more passionate I've been, uh, the more passionate I'm getting about making sure that your study Bibles stay on the shelf most of the time and that you use them as a reference when needed, not that it's your first go-to, I need to open the study Bible and read what this guy says. Open your reference Bible and read what God says. Do that six or seven times for three or four days in a row and pray through that process. Meditate on those scriptures before you just jump into the study Bibles. Because again, some of these study Bibles that I've reviewed, especially as of late, the contributors, I just don't, I don't, I don't think that they're accurate or at the very least I have trust issues because things they've come out, uh, with certain social issues um, that they've they've spoken out against are just non-biblical. And so now I'm supposed to trust them to be commenting on scripture in other areas. It doesn't mean they're always wrong. It doesn't mean they're always right one way or the other. But what it does kind of show me, and hopefully I've done an okay job of expressing this to you today, is that we need to be discerning in what we read. We need to be discerning in who we listen to, into the pastors and the speakers that we hear speak, the YouTube channels that we watch, and knowing that, um, knowing that as we listen, we need to be filtering all that through the actual Word of God. And in order to do that, you have to be familiar with the actual Word of God, which means spending more time in your resource, in your just your basic reference Bible and the basic Word of God than in any other place. I hope these things have helped today. I really do. This has been on my heart and been on my mind um, and, because it's important. And I hope that reading through the Bible uh, just builds the fire bigger and makes you more and more hungry to hear what God has to say and that you're praying through those things regularly. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me today. Your time is valuable. I hope I've earned the privilege of that time. We do have lots of good content coming out. I'm going to keep trying to put it out as much as I can. Um, so thank you for being here with me today. Don't forget, be the Christian you claim to be. Hey, have you found value in this channel and are looking for a way that you can support us a little bit more, make sure this ministry continues to put solid content out there? Well, here's a few quick ways. Number one, prayer. We can always use as much prayer as possible, making sure our content is Christ-focused and Scripture-centered. Uh, so any prayers that you can offer would be great. Number two would be uh, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already, consider subscribing. We put out shorts, uh, a couple of shorts a week usually, and as many reviews as we can get done, as well as other great content. So subscribe. Hit those thumbs up uh, buttons when they come up. And make sure you watch the whole video. That helps YouTube put the videos in front of other people who might be interested in content just like you were. Uh, and number th number three, if you feel led to give financially to help us continue making videos, this does take a lot of time and, and energy, and all those gifts are very much appreciated. There's a link down in the description to the PayPal account. And I want to say this, may you be blessed. I appreciate you guys this time.